Hey guys, today we are driving the 2021 BMW X5 xDrive 45e. All that means, this is the plug-in hybrid BMW X5. And it is one of the most impressive BMWs I think I've ever driven. It has 30 miles of electric driving range, and it's mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission and their 3-liter twin-scroll turbo inline 6. A great powertrain. It's all-wheel drive. It doesn't really look that much different from a normal X5. You just plug it in overnight and you can do a good portion of your driving on full electric power. It has a 24 kilowatt hour battery that's located kind of in the center and in the back and all down low. This weighs about 750 pounds more than the four cylinder X5, but you wouldn't know it. It hides its weight incredibly well and it hides the fact that it's a hybrid incredibly well, except for the charge door and the badge on the back you wouldn't know this is any different from a normal BMW X5. And I kind of like that. The X5 is, in my opinion, one of the best luxury SUVs on the market. And in this form, I think it's one of my favorites. We've got a really nice usable package here, a good amount of space, a nice amount of performance. I think this is BMW at their best right now. I don't even mind the way it looks. We haven't gone too crazy with any certain styling element. I don't think there's anything that's too offensive here. The front end is kept at bay. The grille, yeah, it's a little bit larger than it has been in the past, but it's not overwhelming. And I think it works pretty well with the proportions on the rest of the car. Let's start out back, show you guys the split tailgate, and we'll move our way up to the front. Then we'll take this X5 for a drive and talk about how it does on the road. I've always liked the split tailgate. Pretty practical, easy to throw stuff in at a moment's notice without having to lower this bottom portion. You've got a nice privacy screen right here. You can easily fold down the second row of seats using this lever right there, and you get a very nice loading space. You can lower the second part of it down like that, and it turns into a bit of a shelf. And if you want to put it all back together, just press one button <laughs> and it closes. Very cool, very sharp. This also has auto leveling air suspension and there's a button in the back to lower that so you get a little bit easier loading height into the rear hatch. Really nice packaging. I like how these seats can fold down easily at my five foot 10 driving position without having to go into the front seat, move that forward and then fold the seats down. We've got a lot of room in the back here Plenty of room to stretch out underneath the front seats. Little USB-C port and this little adapter here for a iPad or tablet. You can just plunk that right in there and you have rear seat entertainment. There's a rear window shade, rear climate control, an armrest. Pretty typical stuff that you see in an X5, no surprises here. You can see some of the ambient lighting under the seats and in the door. And it might be a little bit too light right now, but there's also ambient lighting here in the sunroof, and that'll really show up in a bit when it gets darker outside. Pretty attractive looking interior, in my opinion. Let's walk around and show you guys inside the engine bay. So like I said earlier, this is BMW's three liter turbo inline six. Look how low it sits in the engine bay. Of course, you've got all the battery connecting cables back there that are bright orange. 389 horsepower and 443 pound-feet of torque going through an all-wheel drive, eight-speed automatic transmission. I'm not sure what the split is between gas and electricity there, but it makes for a very nice powertrain. There's a lot of torque fill and a decent amount of usable power for just electric-only driving. And looking at how low the engine sits in this X5 really highlights the focus on low center of gravity that BMW has put into this SUV. The batteries are mounted pretty low, and as a result, there's not a lot of body roll. We'll talk more about that once we get this on the road. We have some active grill shutters here that open up when the engine needs more cooling, but honestly, in my experience this week, the engine's barely turned on. Here's your charge port. I will say one thing about this X5 plug-in hybrid, is it is incredibly slow to charge. And part of that is just the battery capacity. 24 kilowatt hours is a pretty big battery for a plug-in hybrid. It actually does qualify for the $7,500 tax credit, 
which is very nice considering this starts around $65,000. I don't have a Monroni for this specific car, but I assume this is somewhere around 75, 80 grand with all the options. On the inside, we've got a very familiar interior, really not much different from any other BMW X5, except for these few buttons right down here, your drive modes. You've got sport, which turns the engine on and changes the gauge cluster from a power meter to a tachometer on the right, which is very cool. It also changes the seat bolster so it hugs you a little bit tighter. You've got hybrid drive mode, which is a balanced hybrid drive mode. Full electric, which will, you know, kind of reduce your power and speed unless if you get fully into the throttle and then the engine will kick in and give you more power. There's that kick down switch right at the bottom of the accelerator pedal. And then there's adaptive, which just adapts the powertrain to whatever driving situation you're in. I like the ergonomics a lot in this X5. You have buttons, knobs, and switches for just about everything that you would use on a daily basis. You don't have to go deep into the menus to perform normal tasks. I've got a button right here in the center of the steering wheel for a heated steering wheel. Heated seats and climate controls are right here along this section. You can adjust manually or automatically. Down here, there's a place to wirelessly charge your phone, a couple of cup holders, a USB port, and another storage for a passenger's phone, which is very nice. A Little bit of storage right there with another USB-C charge port. A decently sized glove box. And then there's the BMW iDrive system. The more I use this, the easier it is to operate. I've really grown to appreciate this iDrive system, especially when compared to some of the other infotainments out there on the market. There's a lot of customizability. There are a lot of menus and settings, but the information is organized really well. You've got these quick access buttons down here. I wish they would correlate to Apple CarPlay controls. Like if you're navigating with Waze or Google Maps in CarPlay and you hit map, it won't just take you to the BMW navigation. It'll actually take you to the CarPlay navigation like what Mazda does. But that's really one of my only complaints about it. Um, it's a very nice large screen. You can use it as a touch screen. It's responsive. And there isn't really anything too crucial hidden within these menus. You can quickly access all of your safety systems, whether you want to turn on or off lane keep assist very quickly. Uh, you can set individual settings for that. So right now I've got all of these settings, or you can just hold this button to turn everything completely off. Same story with the steering wheel, a nice organization of buttons. Initially, this takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you learn what does what, it's a very nice cruise control system to use. All right, let's take this X5 for a drive and see what it's like on the road. This one isn't equipped with a 360 camera. You get the reverse camera and then parking sensors around the rest of the vehicle. Would be nice to see around some of these, uh, these blind spots. So we're gonna start off in hybrid driving mode. We've got a decent charge in our battery, about 15%. It's showing me 16 miles of electric driving range. And the most impressive thing about this BMW X5 is just how smooth and quiet it is, especially with run flat tires. This air suspension does a really impressive job soaking up bumps. You also get a little bit of ride height control. I think it's only about 1.75 inches though from its lowest setting to its highest setting. So maybe a little bit more ground clearance for off-roading, but this is by no means an off-roader SUV. Before we get started with today's drive, I would like to thank our sponsor for this video, Phantom Wallet. This is my daily wallet. It's a well-engineered product that I really have enjoyed using the last year or so. This is the Phantom R, it's their higher-end model. You can bolt on a number of different attachments to the back. This is the key holder attachment, and uh, I really like this because it kind of combines everything that I need out of my wallet. I can hold my keys, I can have a money clip on the other side that I bolt on, hold some cash, and I can fan out all my cards like this. There are a number of different finishes, color choices, card capacities, pretty much customizable to anything that you need. Check them out at phantomwallet.com and use the code TOFER for 10% off your order. Most of your driving with a decent charge in hybrid mode is gonna be on full electric power. You can feel subtle shifts from that eight-speed automatic, but for the most part, it's a pretty seamless and smooth driving experience. Very quiet, very refined, 
very solid. You give it a little bit more throttle, you can hear the engine come on. And that's that beautiful inline six that we've grown to love. Handling is pretty impressive too. There is virtually no body roll in this X5. I attribute some of that to the adaptive suspension and some of that to just the packaging in this BMW. Everything is low and really well balanced from front to back. Cruising on the highway, there's very little wind and road noise, and that's really where this X5 starts to shine. It's super refined, super smooth. This powertrain is just on kind of a different level from a lot of the other plug-in hybrid powertrains on the market. 30 miles of range I think is a nice sweet spot for people who drive longer distances you could probably get away with easily having half your driving done on full battery power and for those who have shorter commutes you might not even get into the engine very much let's put us into electric mode so again I'm not exactly sure how much horsepower you get in full EV driving mode it's enough to get you up to speed but not necessarily enough to blow your socks off I'm full power right now, and uh, this is about the acceleration you could expect. Let's try sport mode. This will turn the engine on, give us a tachometer. Paddle shifters work just like any other BMW X5 with a straight six. A little bit of safe understeer, but otherwise, Pretty well balanced chassis and you do get quite a bit of torque fill between getting into the throttle and when the turbo kicks in it has the immediacy of an electric car but the range and the practicality of a gasoline engine the only trade-off is weight let's go back into electric mode and you can cruise pretty comfortably at highway speeds in full EV mode. You can even get a little bit of acceleration out of it. 81, 82, 83, 84, going up a hill, not bad, totally usable. You're not gonna be making any major passes in this, but if you do need to, you can always put your, put your foot past that kick down switch, the engine will kick on, and you're off. The only negative to this is if you're doing a lot of electric only driving, and then you need to get into the power, the engine is going from stone cold to full boost in a matter of a second. And uh, I'm sure BMW has figured it out with oil technology that might be okay these days, but it makes me think that, you know, maybe there should be some type of a warm-up cycle for the engine. Though, if you're doing a lot of plug-in, drive, and park, that will burn up some fuel, and if you're looking for an electric-only driving experience, um, that would kind of hinder it a little bit. Really nice chassis, very tight. When you do push through that kickdown switch, if you're in full electric mode, it will automatically put you back into a hybrid driving mode. And adaptive is pretty descriptive. It just kind of adapts to whatever you want to do. I've really enjoyed driving this in electric driving mode, though, this week. Again, it does just take a long time for this to charge up. Uh, I have 120 in my garage right now, but I've heard that even on 240, it can take 10, 12, 15 hours to reach a full charge. You do get a little bit of regenerative braking off throttle. And there's also a pretty neat mode too. It's called the battery control mode. And this is basically just a battery hold mode. You can set a target value for the engine to charge the battery up to, uh, or it can just kind of maintain the battery where you're at. Super seamless transition between electric and gasoline engine. There are no weird lurches or sensations behind the wheel. A little bit of tire squeal, a little bit less grip from these on flat tires that you would get normally. Let's 
check out cruise control here. So we'll engage the system by turning on this center button and you can switch between assisted driving and distance control. Set our speed at 75 miles an hour. You can one press this toggle switch up and down for one mile an hour increments or full press for five mile an hour increments, which is really nice. Easily control your distance for, from the vehicle ahead of you right here. And you kind of get a visualization of where you are in the lane. Assisted driving keeps you really well centered between the lines. And there are sensors in the steering wheel that can kind of tell if you've got your hands on the wheel or not. It seems to do a pretty good job. It doesn't follow too close or too far away from vehicles ahead of you. And if you need to make a pass, it does so pretty quickly, even before you start moving into the lane next to you. I think what's impressing me the most about this X5 plug-in hybrid is just the refinement and level of calibration with all the controls and all the systems here. This is such a refined and smooth and easy plug-in hybrid to live with. It's luxurious, it's got great performance, it's reasonably fun to drive. There's not a lot of steering feel, there's not a lot of feel through the chassis, but you're very isolated and you're very comforted when you're driving this thing around. It almost has electric car levels of NVH. You don't quite have the power level that you would in like a RAV4 Prime, for example, just from the electric motor. It's more along the lines of what you see in the Volvo T8 powertrains. But for most driving, we're just cruising around town or getting up to speed on the highway, you're gonna to be totally fine driving this in full EV mode, which I think is really cool. You can hear on this fresh pavement just how quiet this X5 is on the highway at speed. Brake pedal feels very natural. No weird squishiness or sponginess there. This X5 kind of does it all. You can tow just under 6,000 pounds with it. The auto leveling air suspension rides really, really well. Handles nicely. If you don't need something to do off-road duty for you, this is a pretty good luxury option. Very recommendable. Let's go back into electric mode here. decent amount of acceleration. That's about all you'll see at full throttle. BMW really is at the peak of their game with their SUVs these days. This X5 is just one of the best cars that they make. It kind of makes you wonder why would you bother buying a sedan from them because it has the space, the practicality, the driving dynamics. It really combines it all and puts it into a very compelling package. And unless if you want an M car, which honestly is a little bit rougher than I would want out of an SUV, this is kind of the ultimate X5 in my opinion. It's fast. That e-boost really kicks in quickly and combined with the gasoline engine, it provides a lot of torque fill. It's pretty fun to drive.
back into electric mode. Pretty cool stuff from BMW. Well done. I haven't been this impressed with a new BMW in a long time. And they've just done such a good job calibrating this X5 plug-in hybrid. Yes, it'd be nice to have a little bit more range, but realistically, I think you can expect a solid 25 to 31, 32 miles out of a charge in this thing. Depending if you're driving on the highway or around city situations, you do get a lot of mileage back from regenerative braking, from letting off the throttle. And when you factor in the tax credit, this X5 could be about the same or maybe even just a little bit more than some of the lower trim models in the X5 lineup. Of course, options are always going to cost you a lot of money, and this one's probably fully, fully loaded. But the refinement, the quietness, the levels of NVH in here are really, really impressive for the price point. And it almost sits a little bit above or punches a little bit above its weight, and uh, it feels more X7 than X5 in my opinion in terms of just quality and feel and the way it drives down the road. You can see here on the readout, we've driven about 25 miles on electric power on this charge, and there's about seven miles remaining estimated. Your range on your fuel tank will kind of change according to how much electric driving you're doing. Sometimes you'll get some really high numbers, like four or 500 miles out of a tank of gas if you're doing a lot of charging and driving. Uh, other times when you're really using up that battery and driving a lot on just gas, that'll become a more realistic number. This doesn't get very good fuel economy on just gasoline internal combustion engine driving. It's about 21 miles of the gallon combined. We've already tested this Harmony Kardon system a couple of times, but I think we could do a quick sound system test. Of course, there's also gesture control. <laughs> kind of silly, kind of a gimmick, but it works. All right, guys, well, a really impressive X5 from BMW. Just such a well-balanced, really expertly calibrated car. 
This X5 I think might be my favorite X5 and the one I would personally go for if I were shopping for a luxury SUV. Um, I think probably one of the best plug-in hybrids I've driven. It really makes a lot of sense. It has a ton of capability. It kind of does it all and uh, in a really nice package that doesn't have a lot of faults. It's a little bit expensive, but it's a BMW X5. It's a little bit heavy, but it's got a pretty big battery pack. Otherwise, I'm struggling to find much that I don't really like about this. Well done, BMW. I think you've got something here. Stick with it. And um, yeah, this is a good direction for the brand and good direction for the X5. Well done. Oh, well, there is one thing. You're always getting your pant leg dirty on this sill right here, if the car is dirty. <laughs> it's pretty clean today, so it's not much to worry about, but yeah, that's always kind of been a little bit of annoyance with this. Otherwise though, I love this thing. This has been great. Really enjoyed our week with this. Um, would easily get one of these as a daily driver and uh, run it with pleasure. I think you could do pretty much most, if not, at least half of your driving on full electric power with something like this. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure driving this X5 this week. We've got some more fun stuff coming in for you next week and going forward. Just hit 300,000 subscribers. Really appreciate all the support on the channel lately. This has been uh, just a blast sharing all these cars with you guys, driving everything, filming all this stuff for you these last few years. I think I started doing this channel seriously in 2017 and uh, it's just been a ton of fun so winding road just hit 900,000 we just hit 300k here so really really appreciate the support we'll see you guys in the next video